Welcome everyone to today's video. We're the Dimitrov Boulay Piano Duo. My name is Dimitri Dimitrov. My name is Sofia Boulay. And in today's video, we're going to answer one of the questions we had from the time when I recorded a vlog on the Chopin Polonaise Opus 26, number one. And those questions were how to choose the right fingering and second of all, how much to use the fingering that's already written in the score. And we thought those were some great questions and that's what we're going to talk about today. And just to clarify one thing that would, the advice that we are going to give you on these few bars of the Polonaise Opus 26 number one, you can actually apply with other pieces that you are playing. So we are going to try to explain what we think and how we think in general terms of fingering. So the first question is how to choose the right fingering and I think that this is a really tough question to answer, especially in one video. <laughs> but um, also just in one lesson with a student, you know, um, because it is really, I think, a, a development process of how to feel what is the right fingering. And I think often students wouldn't be able to tell a good fingering from a bad fingering. But we will try to demonstrate a little bit of how we generally think about fingering. And um, we chose two different editions, one in which we both think that there's a good fingering and one in which we think that um, there were actually some places that perhaps would be a good good fingering, but there were also some examples of a bad fingering. We're gonna try to explain why that is. Now we have, that also will answer one of your questions because you, you asked how to choose. So what were the two questions How to again? choose the right fingering and how much to use actually what's written in the score. Now the answer, one of the answers to both of these questions is have a good edition. Have a good edition and we have we, one of the versions that we have is this is the Henle so this is the Henle version of the the one that I actually I made the video on I use this version and the other version is simply something of IMSLP so it's just a random score found on IMSLP. I'm not saying that you cannot find good scores on IMSLP, but more often than not, the way that they're written, the fingering, the even the notation isn't as good. It's actually really much inferior to Henle. And so one of the answers to, to your questions, how, how to choose fingering would be select a good score make sure that you have a good edition of the piece that you're going to play. Absolutely, and in preparation for this video, I actually uh, collected a few editions for a few different things. So for etudes, for um, romantic pieces, and I will pop them at the end of the video. I will pop them up for you so that you can actually see at least my opinion, our opinion on good fingerings for um, different pieces. So we can compare now a few things. At the beginning of the piece, both versions start with fourth finger with the right hand. But let's skip to the part where actually you have difference. Bar five. Bar five. So the bar five is when you have this place. Now here, if you look at the two versions, one version it starts with we start with the third finger on the D sharp. Uh, that's that's good. Both versions have the same. Then logically, you would continue with second finger, two, three, four, right? Because that's exactly what's logical. We'll approach this as a little lesson on those few bars. You have third finger on the, the on the D sharp. You wouldn't use, for example, first on the C sharp, right? You probably have that knowledge already. You are going to go to the E sharp, and you end with fourth finger. Now here is where it gets interesting. The version that I use doesn't have a fingering on the next note, on the D-sharp, but it has first finger on the E-sharp. So we're supposed to do 3, 1, and then 3, as you can see in the score. And then 2, 3, 4, 3, 4, 5. So that's logical. The only tricky part is where we have the E-sharp with a fourth finger and then 3, 1, 3. Now the other score, we as well arrive with fourth finger on the E sharp, but the other score suggests that we move immediately to second finger 
on the D sharp and then you have two, three, four, one, two, four, two, three, five. Now, I don't see the logic in that. I can, I can imagine, right, we're discussing the fingering from E sharp with the fourth finger, we can move to IMSLP where they go with two. Two, that's fine. Okay, yeah. I can, I can say that's, that's okay. Why not three, one, like it's in the handle, because that's really pleasant. But we can go with two, three, four. But then again, we have to change pattern in the hands, we'll not follow a logical fingering, logical sequence, but from four, we have to go to one, two. And then why would we go to one, two, four, and not to one, two, three, right? One, two, four, look how that looks, and one, two, three, and then two, three, five. Now, while that's possible, if we follow what, ha what they did in Handlet, the editors, you end up with three, four, five in the right hand, on the last notes instead of two, three, five. So you can see that Henley has a very logical fingering while in, in this score, it's a little bit inconvenient. It's a little bit unnecessary to make all the time shift. So my conclusion would be, be as efficient as possible. And that's what I tell our students very often, be as efficient as possible in your um, approach to fingering look for logical solutions, look for things that make sense. You want to, yeah, that's, you know. It is, it's such a tricky subject, but like in this case, you have a lot of seconds, right? The melody just goes up that's per a good note. Point. And there is absolutely, the most natural thing to play seconds is simply just with the, the neighboring fingers. I also have, I do have students that have just very large hands and very large fingers and they would not even be able to play no, the that, fingering that would be impossible. of the other edition. I've seen this. Um, with smaller hands, you're right. With smaller hands, that would be... It's possible. It's inconvenient, but, but possible. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's why I also find this such a great question and such an interesting topic because honestly, it's such a big secret of piano playing and it does take a long time to develop actually a natural feeling for fingering. So I think that our first advice would be know what uh, good editions are and just buy or borrow copy a good edition. Because if you have to start, some pieces are actually very logically written um, and not that difficult to figure out a fingering. This but, is a complex piece yeah, already. Yeah, but if you have to figure out a fingering from scratch, it is going to take you so long and 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 it, it is difficult to come up with something natural, I think, if you don't have a lot of experience with that. And yeah. even I don't do it because it just costs me too much time. And I know Henle uh, hires just really, really good pianists to do their fingering. I, however, do have to change every once in a while. That comes to your second point, right? Um, when do you have to, how much do you have to use the score? You have to realize that fingering even though there's things that are logical, as we were just talking about, if you have a melody going up in seconds, it would be more natural to do it with neighboring fingers. Um, you, you do have to realize that hands are different. Uh, if you've seen our previous video uh, from a while back, you know that I have very small hands and I do have to change the fingering sometimes. But I think that, that one of the best things to do when it comes to fingering is to, to make sure that you have a good addition and to go from there. And I think that more or less, I don't have, again, experience with people who are completely self-taught to observe their fingering. But in my opinion, from everything I've seen, you do need a teacher because we've taught a lot of people. And even when they're beginners or not completely beginners, they come from a different teacher. You definitely need a good teacher to learn proper fingering. Proper fingering, I don't think you can learn it all by yourself because you don't have... You don't have the experience of somebody who has played professionally from being a very beginner, from the very beginning of piano playing till they get... Because you need experience. You need to play a lot of pieces. You need somebody's guidance to tell you, okay, so this is good and to explain why it is good and why something else isn't so good. And when you combine that with doing that over and over again with a lot of different pieces, at some point you start having feeling for fingering. That's what I do with my students. I love encouraging. I think a good teacher should encourage you to suggest fingerings yourself. I ask my students to tell me what do they think is a good fingering, for example, in this sort of piece. 
And then I would tell them if that's possible, if that's okay. I would tell them that if I would do something different, and I would also tell them when they should not use the fingering like that. So I give them options. And in this way, by playing a lot of different pieces, by having by having suggestions from your teacher, you will be able at some point to have a very good intuition, very good feeling for what's a good fingering. So what Elvira just mentioned, all those things are very, very good additions, scores with fingering, good scores with some fingering, so you can already get a feeling because they're in general, you can trust them. More or less, you can trust them, but there's a lot of places that you don't have fingering. And I wouldn't mm. start improving your fingering with pieces like this. Mm -hmm. I would improve fingering your feeling for fingering your knowledge of fingering with pieces that are easier. And before we move on, because I think that we can just show another example. There was, another there interesting was definitely example. interesting places here. I know a lot of uh, you are subscribers. I know a lot of you are actually at the moment not able or, you know, uh, with a teacher. What would be my advice then is would be to play a simple, a simple etudes. I mean, basic etudes, not like romantic etudes, not Chopin etudes or something like that, but basic, something like Czerny, something like Absolutely. Le Moine. In a good edition, uh, Hennon also has all scales, ar arpeggios, um, seventh chords, broken seventh chords, etc. And you can learn the standard fingering of, uh, of all those basic piano techniques in that way. And then what you would need is an, a very large amount of discipline and consciousness and practicing slow enough to actually check yourself if you are doing the fingering that's written. Didn't you just sell again the idea of playing etudes, how important it is? Yes, I will never stop with that. Play etudes. Play etudes is actually really a fantastic advice what, what you just gave because with etudes you, not only you develop technique but good technique but also different patterns, you learn different patterns, how to combine them, you also learn proper fingering so that's a great advice to go and play Czerny etudes. It's not just about playing fast after that, nothing like that. It's just fantastic, it's just the education you need to play properly. But um, yeah, so oh, I, I like this part. I, maybe we can do that one because that, that was, was very an interesting. interesting. So yeah. if you look at the bar eleven and twelve, right? Yeah. We go to three mm -hmm. and then four one. Now, if you look at the IMSLP, you will see we start with five and then four, one four instead of one three, and then we go to five on the grace note towards the A. Now, I don't like this. And why? Because that's something very interesting to learn. In general, this kind of places are dangerous to do with fifth finger because you have a black key. You're going to be much more safe having what's written in hand three and four one, then four and four. Because you can slip with the fifth finger, you can easily slip off the F sharp and have a wrong note. Of course, you can practice it. It's not about that it's not possible, but it's again knowledge of what's better. That's the same as octaves. Octaves, black, black keys, octaves with four, fourth finger and white keys with fifth finger. That's a rule that you learn from when you're like this and then, then you know, then you know what's, then you know why you should play octaves with fourth finger and not uh, with fifth finger on the black keys. This is a similar thing. So Henley gives you three, four, and the other score gives you four, five, which is much more, I feel much more insecure when I do this kind of um, fingering. Yes, and I think leading up to the grace note even, the fact that you again do one, four, means you have to contract your hand much more. You have to oh, yeah. like, really make your hand very That's small. That's also true. Yeah. And right before you're playing also an, uh, a grace note like that, you don't want to suddenly like cramp up your hand like that. And again, I do have students that would simply not be able to make that movement at all because they have too large fingers, too large hands. So I think it's, it's two problems immediately following each other. Anyway, I w I'm not going to give more examples. We had some more examples, mm -hmm. but the video is going to get very <laughs> long. And I think you get the... Um, 
the idea of this video and of course if you have passages or places specific places it would be even better if you give us questions that are more specific because then we can target exactly to answer your question with a specific place otherwise it's a very general question great questions you asked uh, but they're very general there are very large questions that just need like if you play 100 pieces we can show you with 100 pieces 100 different things so you can imagine how much variety and how much information there is in these kind of questions yeah so let us know if that was helpful to helpful to you or do you have more specific questions because this is a topic i think that is really really one of the most important things of piano playing Fingering, and, yeah, absolutely and um i think that i will just pop the the additions that i think are really really good uh, i'm sure there can be more but these are the ones that we use most commonly <laughs> For us, recording this video for you was a great pleasure. Thank you so much for being here and watching the video and we will see you next week again.